Hey guys, we're back at Insight for Nerds <laughs> today. We're going to be quickly going over what happened on EU for their week five, day two, right? It's week five, day two for them, yes. Yeah. All right. So we had a lot of storylines get restarted over from the very first week of the LEC. We had the first game of Fnatic taking on SK Gaming. SK Gaming wanted to prove that their first bound against Fnatic wasn't just a uh, first week luck. And SK Gaming managed to take the win. Hence, I predicted this cold hearted. Yeah, honestly, I think the biggest problem was, again, Bwipo played out of his mind terrible. I think that when you're losing, <laughs> when you're consistently losing to a. Uh, Whirlub, who I don't think is that great. It's just incredibly bad for the team. I don't think they're gonna function until this team kind of gets, gets like they 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 essentially know what they're doing in terms of just like an identity, but they're just not good. Like they're losing in the lanes. Like all of these things are happening. If Nemesis should not be playing any any Cassidin at all. Like Nemesis on Syndra and Lissandra, and then you have Nemesis on Cassidin. It's like two totally different players. Like. I, I was kind of disappointed in, uh, what's it called? Because, again, Pyrian's not some sort of lane bully. He's not all of these things. I think a lot of it... I mean, he could be. I don't think... I mean, he's not terrible at it, but I just don't think that's his strength. I liked him on these roaming types of supports and stuff, but... Again, like, Nemesis was probably, again, another one of the weak links. Like, I just... I was Whoa. hoping this, uh, this, this meta would kind of suit them. It kind of seemed like this was going to be the bounce bag, because if you watch their first game of this week, it was pretty incredible. They looked like they were... They, it wasn't just... Take, it wasn't just Splice making mistakes. It was Splice making mistakes and Fnatic taking advantage of it. They were punishing mistakes properly. And I was really excited because I thought, wow, this is the game that's going to make a difference for Fnatic. This is going to be their bounce back. But it's just, it was just incredible. I was incredibly wrong. That was not at all what happened. I went in, I went in going with um, SK looked really good the previous day. And it looked like they had adapted to the patch a lot. I don't um, think they looked better than Fnatic yesterday. Fnatic looked incredible. I just think that uh, SK Gaming looked like they had, they had adapted to the patch a little bit more um, effectively I, to what I mean, their players are They seemed like. like they were playing the same style they had before the patch even came into, into consideration. Where so it just looks like the path like, buffed them. Well, no, I say like, like, they kept playing their same style, where so as Fnatic kind of completely shifted into this, we're going to more centralize around crit ADCs, put the tank back on. Like It, it just seemed like all of their, their situation, like this patch completely like solved all their problems, and I was like, wow, this is it. But, like, again, F Self Made played really well. I think that both of the solo laners won. It was just, it was it was completely one-sided, honestly. Like, I don't think, why did Nemesis, why are they putting Nemesis on Cassidy? He looks so much better when he's not on Cassidy. When he's on Cassidy, it looks like he just visibly does nothing in the game. Like, it's, and then Broxa threw their lead. And then SK Gaming, as we said, uh, beat Fnatic, proving that they are the better team in the spring split, going 2-0 against Fnatic. Next game, Splice versus Excel. Splice want to uh, separate themselves and prove that they are a decent competitive team. But after this game against Excel, I don't really know what to believe. I don't think they're a mid-tier teams, honestly, because, again, I'm going to point it out there. I think Expect looks like one of the better top laners in the league. Like, we've seen him beat Cabochard. We saw Manhandle Visachachi. Like, he's done really well into some of these top-tier top laners, and it's I'm honestly kind of hyped about him. I think XL is one of the biggest pickups. I think he'd look really good on one of these top tier teams. But the problem with X, like XL in general is obviously, even if they get a league, they don't know what to do with it. They just sit there and wait. Like It's like Splice, but they don't wait for late game. They just don't know how to get the game ended. Like They just sit there. Like Obviously, they make some they make some proactive plays around the map towards the beginning half of the games, but like that doesn't amount to anything if you don't kind of suffocate your... Use your lead to suffocate out the other team. Like They just... It's it's aggravating just cause, just watching them. And you had Splice today uh, get beaten by the bot lane. Splice's bot lane were beaten today with a Draven and a Pike on their side. And then you had Expect was a, who, was, who was on the Jarvan, and they were playing really. Expect was playing out of his mind. It was it was a Dra no, it was a Draven Braum. Yeah, Draven Braum. My bad. Um, uh, North Scarin and Kabi were losing to Kasing and Jeskla, which was really really odd you don't normally see that i mean because but it's kind of surprising to me too i mean they didn't really lose i wouldn't say they lost but but xl yeah they end up losing they go to two and s two and eight fanatic also now sitting yeah. at three and seven sk gaming sitting at five and five and splice kind of keeping that guard over the other team sitting at six and four if this was a game we were both wrong about vitality and shalka the match of the day kicking off you had vitality 
wanting to show that they are and can compete for second. And you had Attila versus uh, Upset, the marquee AD carry matchup. Attila and Jack Troll looked completely different today. Like, it looked like a bot lane that they should have been looking like for the past four weeks ago, which is really interesting. I mean, it seemed like Attila had something to prove today. Again, probably it came down from... I mean, it came from Upset insulting him before the game happened. But, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but... Memento did it too. Yeah, but so. Upset was ridiculously over the top with his. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> I think Upset obviously is still the better player. I still think he's the best ADC in EU. But that was definitely a show of his weakness. He got, he let cockiness get to him. Outplayed by what I would say is an inferior ADC in my opinion. A lot of it came down to... Uh, Abadage throwing well, too. Abadage was just horrible. He's a terrible Yasuo and I don't want to see it again. I mean, he was just he was, practically throwing. He was literally like... I don't even understand. Like it's, it was just the basic Yasuo where he just dives in a turret and then dies. Like it was ag- like, there's no reason that you should play Yasuo. Well, you don't like that? I don't. Not when it's it's a competitive um, game when my team's the one losing. Um, Got it. Oduamne was outclassed by a uh, v- Kabashard. I Kabashard also today proving why he is one of, if not the best. Top, I don't think he's the uh, best. I'm, I would honestly put Expect in that in that category right now. Expect Wonder. Would be the top two right now for me. So Vitality moved to seven and three. Time Shulka at second place. Then we have the biggest upset of the day. Second biggest, if you want to compare the next one, is Rogue get their first win against. Misfits. Definitely not the and, biggest upset. Uh, uh, but the way they did it was interesting because Kickus decided to play Pantheon. <laughs> Kickus played Pantheon. We haven't seen a Pantheon in almost two years. Well, I mean, a, a year and some odd, some some change because of Rift Rivals of last year. It's definitely year. been seen before then. If you count, are you only counting like EU or what's going on? Uh, it was played at Rift Rivals last year with Dardock and G- when, the, when Echo Fox played. played I'm not G2 really surprised that. to this. Like with the nerf to jungle XP, I'm not surprised that Pantheon could probably thrive because you're always going to hit that level two. But the but getting put behind is detrimental to your ability to catch back up. On top of the fact that. Early game, eighty. I mean, junglers are thriving in this type of meta because scaling junglers just can't get the levels. So I'm not surprised that Pantheon can like function in this meta. I'm I'm kind of surprised it worked this well. Misfits dropped to zero and four. They have lost their last four matches after being in what type for, for first? They were under. Yeah, they were almost underneath by uh, Shalka. They were sitting at four and two. Just not. I mean, they were undefeated ago. at one point. With yeah, tied with G2. they were. They were they went they've lost so many games since then. Oh my lord. And today it looked like Vander and what's his name? Finn were able to kind of shore up a lot of the rogue weaknesses and give Rogue their first win. I don't I, I maybe they get another win next week. I but still think Prophet this, this is, is quite a bit better than Finn, but I'm kind of happy with Finn's how he's turning out. Um But Misfits uh, they got their Lucian pick today, and they still lost. It's not just based off that. All you have to do is focus some attention towards bot as the enemy. Like, that's all you have to do at this point to shut this team down. I think a lot of it comes down to Soaz just losing. There's, like, that's... But we, we, we predicted he would do that early yes, on. Yes, but he's play, he was playing well over. throughout the entire year, so I expected better. I don't... It wasn't him playing bad, or no, they just focused... he was playing well. They did, they did. Come on. You can't, you can't take away from what he did. He... He absolutely manhandled a lot of the top laners in the league. And today, you said yesterday G2 was going to lose, be, be the first one to lose out of the undefeated teams in the major regions. G2 lose today to Origin. Again, first loss. New, New Duck played Zed and then 1v1 Caps. First of all, I'm going to point out again, I think that the difference between Caps and the other mid laners is a lot less substantial than the difference between Jensen and the other mid laners because. I think there's a lot of talented EU mid laners in EU. There's a lot of them. There's Jukse and Nukta, who on, on some days can be better than Caps, in my opinion. Which was shown today when Nukta did. And again, another point thing I pointed out yesterday. Um, I think that a, another kind of weakness of this team is I don't like their sense of macro. I think it's one of the weaker in terms of the undefeated teams. I did think it was the weakest because I although I do think they, they punish hard lane mistakes, their early game aggression is incredible, but... I don't like if they don't get that early game lead. I don't know. I don't like how they get back into the game. They get based. They get. Ba- they try and get back to in it like based off of mechanical outplays more so as kind of like suffocating the enemy team trying to rotate around the map. Like G like G two is an incredibly talented team, but I think it's more so based off the star power than anything. I'm really not just too hyped on them yet. I think I 
I still am, but the the I- issue today showed that uh, new Nuke Duck being as experienced as he is, and people need pe- people forget it. Nuke Duck played Zed last split with Shalka and got him a couple wins on that. I think it's one of more of his better pocket picks, but he showed today why certain EU mid laners with this pure mechanical skill can actually beat Caps. And if you shut down Caps, it looked like they didn't really know what to do. Again, after Perks that. is the this bot lane in Perks and uh. Mickey Maybe. X are the clear defined weakness of this team. I think that Perks and Mickey X, although they they obviously have good stats, but that's coming off of the side lane and all the jungle pressure and all the top lane pressure they're generating. Like it's not really coming off of them, and they're allowed to free farm and get get all these these ganks coming in because of the fact that their team is doing so well. I think that Picky, Perks, although he has a very large champion pool, is still limited in how well he can play ADCs. I don't think it's incredibly good. I don't think anything besides maybe his Lucian is decent. I did not like his Kai'Sa. Like, so I think that this is going to be a big turning point for this team. I still think they're going to obviously be the best team. but I think that there's they, they could still probably go like 17 and I'd, 1. I, they could, things. but again, I think they're going to lose one or two more games because I think, like again, there's a lot of talented teams in this league. I think that EU is stacked in terms of just all the middle tier teams. All the top yeah. tier teams are incredibly good, and I think that G2... Is, is disrespectful to an extent because their comp was just not based. They didn't bi- ba- uh, take a comp that was built to beat this one. They just took what I would assume is just one for fun. They're not taking this seriously, and they, they deserve that loss, honestly. I, I, I think that they always said they, have like, well, last week they said in scrims they got sick, and then they, you know, sometimes people said they screw around in scrims. So maybe this, this is their a wake-up call that, okay, maybe we need to take this seriously. And then if they take this seriously, they're probably going – Probably sixteen and two or seventeen and one, but that closes out EU week five. And we should two, probably um, capitalize on what Origin did because we didn't even talk about them yet. I was just about to do you that. Weren't, you were about to shut this video down, weren't you? I would never do that. Origin actually played substantially really well. Cold looked absolutely amazing through both of his games, playing Gragas and playing his uh, Karthus pick as well. And then Nuke Duck was probably the most valuable player toward their victories this week. And then you also had Mithy coming back into his form. I like the fact that Mithy is actually starting to look like his old G2 self, looking like a better uh, support in, in Europe. Uh, Patrick, uh, he's just there. And then you have Alfari, who was also just there. But it doesn't matter because Nuke, Duck, and Cold are... You need to stop disrespecting Patrick. Patrick because he's incredibly de- talented. He did nothing today. He was, he was fine. He did f- completely well today. Excuse me? God. I just don't understand your your obsession with te- tearing down Sheriff or, or Patrick. Do you know that Selfmade still leads the the leaderboard in MVP? Well, obviously, again, if it's it's if it's based off of MVP bo- votes and he's the only decent player on the team, he's gonna get it every time for every one of their wins. And all, even though they they lost less games than G two, more. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. For it doesn't matter English. because there's a lot of talented players on G two. Caps is not the only good player. But Selfmade is yeah, the only good player on SK. Yeah, but, like, Jizuke is up there, too, and it's like... Jizuke uh, and Cabochard I, are playing well, so I would not be surprised if... Cabochard's not even up here. That's it's ridiculous. Up. Well, it doesn't matter. Cabochard's not... What I'm saying is he, they're both he's playing like number, well. He's, like, number six. Yeah. But overall, uh, anything else you want to add before? Um, I think this is going to be... I'm, I'm kind of excited that G2 lost because I think this is going to kind of sh- help them shore up what I would say is their weak... I still am not hyped on their macro. I think they're suffocating. I don't like it. I don't like suffocating through pure mechanical skill. I don't think that's always going to work out against the top tier teams. But uh, it's going to, like, I do, re- I am really hyped to see what this kind of, this this mindset kind of changes, like, what it does to G2. Because now that they know that they can be beaten, I think this is going to, this is going to be the, like, this is going to be a, what's it called? A nice yeah, it's going to be a good situation for them because now I think they're going to focus more so on taking the game seriously because it really has not seemed like they have been. They're obviously the best team in the league. They're, like, by far and away, more mechanically skilled than everybody else. There's nothing they really have to prove. So, I think they wanted to go undefeated and this is going to be, like, an angering thing. I would like to see them just not lose a game again, but it might not be I mean, like Again, if they keep playing the way they have, they're going to lose one or two more. Well, the next match is up against Schalke next week, but we'll talk about that uh, next week. But I think that this is also going to be a nice, clear... This is a very clear indicator of who's on a downward trajectory and who's on an upward trajectory. I think Schalke and Vitality are the clear-cut 
second. Yeah, second and third. Second. I agree with that. They're they're. I think they're tied for second. Yeah. I don't think it's like one's third and one's second. I think they're. Both I think tied. that Shalga, when it's not specifically against uh, Vitality, is better. Because I think they're better it against like everybody, that. but what? It feels well, like because that. Vitality again, I think is a bad matchup for them because I think that uh, Capital Shard obviously matches up. I I I thought Oluwamu was playing really well this year, but Capital Shard plays quite a bit in ter in terms of just into him. He plays really well. It was not a good matchup for Oduwamne. Oduwamne plays really well into everybody else. Um, I'm happy that Rogue got their first win. I'm but not. I it's it's like they needed a change, and I like I don't I think this is the only win they're gonna get. Because Misfits is in a horrible slump. I'd be surprised if Misfits even made the playoffs at this rate if they keep playing how they have. You just you hated them ever since they announced the roster. It was a stupid pickup on their part. Yes, I hated them. Oh, you hate everything. If Misfits if Misfits starts turning around, I'll be hyped. But this is exactly the level of play I expected from them. Oh my goodness, the two hundred IQ. No, it's not. It's a lot of mis like underperforming people on this team that they drafted. I mean, the the community made them out to well, be. I'm a sorry. Person. Like Gorilla was a not the, playing well the, last uh, year. A, a lot of the coaches and the pro players said they weren't going to be a super team. Well, no one like anybody who actually noticed how Gorilla was playing last year, how Soaz was playing last year, how Fevman was playing really recently last year. Like all these players were not playing extremely. Hansama was playing fine, but again, not incredibly, not not in the top for the ADCs. He's been good, not just insane. And then we have Ignar, who obviously I thought he was. I uh, know Ignar, uh, Gorilla, Gor not Gorilla. Uh, who's the jungler? Gorilla. Maxlor. Maxlor I think Maxlor. He was supposed to be. Supposed to, game in my opinion, shot I thought he was going to be the best player on this team, but he's been underperforming drastically recently. I think he's one of the worst players on this team right now. So. Yeah, that pretty much concludes EU Week Five, Day Two. Next week, uh, on probably like Monday or Tuesday, we'll give our our predictions for Day One of Week Six. Seal and uh, yeah, inside for nerds signing out. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. Let us know your favorite uh, matchup from this week. Um, really interested to see how G2 bounce back because if they went nine and one playing around, how is it gonna be like if they start taking it seriously? I mean, like, that's scary to, to think awesome. about. Like, they're playing around and went undefeated, now they're gonna take it seriously. How better are they gonna become? All right, see you later.